Hello again, it's Teacher Neil, and this week we will be talking about movies and watching TV. So, when you're busy with your IELTS exam and your examiner asks you, how often do you like watching movies? How often do you go out to watch movies? And what kind of movies do you like watching? Then you can use these vocabulary words to express in detail your knowledge of movies and express yourself. Now, let's take a look at these vocabulary words. The first word we have over here is box office hit. Now, the box office is how they calculate how much money a movie makes. So the box office usually is how much money it made. And a hit, if you see the word hit, for example, a hit song, it means it is a success. So, if you see the word box office hit, that means it was a successful movie and it made a lot of money. So you can say, I love watching blockbuster hits. Oh, the Joker was a great movie and it made over a billion dollars. The next word we have is a crowd pleaser. So what a crowd pleaser means, well of course we know a crowd means a lot of people and pleaser means everybody's happy. So a crowd pleaser usually means that a lot of people or the audience really loved it and sometimes it's maybe not such a good movie but it made a lot of people feel happy. So you can say I like to watch crowd pleaser films you know I don't like to think too much I just like to feel good when I go to watch a movie. The next word we have is a blockbuster. So a blockbuster is almost the same as a box office hit. A blockbuster means it is a big success or a very successful movie or it made a lot of money. So you can say, and if we look at this word, indie movie, an indie movie usually means it is a small budget and that means it did not cost a lot of money to make. So if your examiner asks you what kind of movies do you like to watch you can say oh I like indie movies I don't really care much for big blockbuster movies because sometimes it's not that interesting for me. Another word we have here is a bomb. So a bomb, as you know, is not a good thing. So a bomb usually means it lost a lot of money. So you can say, oh, I went to watch that new movie yesterday and it was such a bomb. I can see why it lost so much money, even though it cost millions of dollars to make. So a bomb usually means the movie did not perform as what the producers expected it to perform and it lost money and generally people did not enjoy it that much. The last one over here on this side is a movie goer or a film buff. So a movie goer means that you often like to go watch movies. You can say, oh, I am a movie goer. I go watch movies every week. However, I am not a film buff. And what a film buff means is that you love movies a lot and you really love watching them and going into detail and understanding everything that's happening in the movie. So a film buff is almost like a movie, hold on, a movie expert. An expert, as we know, means you know a lot about it. So, if somebody asks you, are you a film buff? Then you can say, no, I'm not really a film buff, but I am an active moviegoer. I go to the movies once or twice a week. Now, the next word we have is premiere. So premiere usually means it is the opening week or weekend of a movie. 
So premiere means the first date it starts to show. So usually, a lot of people like to watch the movie on its premiere. So if somebody asks you, are you going to watch the new Star Wars movie? Its premiere is this Friday. Then you can say, I don't really like to watch movies on the premiere night because there are too many people. I think I'll wait a week or two so that the theater isn't so crowded. The next word we have is sequel and prequel. So quill means usually that it is the same movie franchise. And what that means is usually you have a movie number one, number two, number three. So if we have, for example, Star Wars, you have got Star Wars 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So just using Star Wars as a reference, the first movie was number 4. And then after that came the sequel. So the sequel means the next movie of the same name. So the next movie of the same name, for example, Ice Age 2. Ice Age 2 would be the sequel to Ice Age. And pre, as we know the word pre, usually means before. So a prequel usually happens before the first movie. So if we use Star Wars, the first movie was number four, and then the sequel was five and six. But then a few years later, they made three prequels. So they started with Star Wars one, two, and three, which were the prequels for the first movie, which was four, five, and six. So, some people like to say, do you like sequels? And then you can say, oh, I don't really like sequels. Usually a sequel is not as good as the original movie. Or some people will say, oh, I love the Star Wars franchise. I have seen all of the sequels and all of the prequels. Now, the next word we have is A-lister. So, <clears throat> What that means is, in Hollywood, there are certain levels of success. So, the list, for example, means how famous. Now, this is only in entertainment. Let me write here, entertainment. So, entertainment usually means movies or music. And A means number one. So A means the top. So what the word A-lister means is the top level of celebrity and the most famous. So you can say, this new movie is an A-lister movie. It has all of the top actors and top directors. And I am very excited for that. If an actor is not so famous anymore and he has gone down on the list, we can say he is a B-list, which is less, or a C-lister, which means they are not that famous or relevant anymore. So you can say, I love watching A-lister movies because I love the famous actors and watching them. The last word we have over here is the word cameo. Now what a cameo usually means is somebody who is not an actor. For example, let's say a basketball player like LeBron James. So we have LeBron James and LeBron James is in a new movie, but he's not playing a part, he's not acting, he's only appearing in the movie as the real LeBron James, 
and he's only in the movie for a little bit, we say he made a cameo. Let me write that there. He made a cameo. So we can say, for example, hey, did you see LeBron James in the new A-lister movie? Yeah, I think that his short cameo was very funny and I think his acting is not so bad. <laughs> so in conclusion, if your examiner asks you, do you like to watch movies or how often do you watch movies? Then you can answer using the vocabulary such as, oh, I love to watch block box office hits. I love to watch blockbuster movies. I go very often. I am an active moviegoer and I've watched so many movies that I am a film buff. You can also say, I like watching a lot of movies, but I try to avoid crowd pleasers or blockbuster movies. I prefer to watch smaller indie movies. You can also tell the examiner when he asks you, well, I often go to movie premieres, but I don't like to watch sequels and prequels. Or you can say, I watch movies very often, but when I watch movies, I prefer to watch A-lister movies. Now, we'll be moving on to words to describe movie types and genres. Now, in your IELTS exam, this is a very common question. People can ask you, what kind of movie types or movie genre? So this is a French word which people use in English and it's very important. Just say that again, genre. What kind of genres do you like? And genre, it just means types pretty much. And you can use that for movies and for music. What genre of movies do you like? What genre of music do you like? Now. Let's look at some of the most common genres and some vocabulary that we can use to explain how we feel about them. The first word is action movies. Now action movies generally mean that there is a lot of action and action means usually uh, fast pace, a lot of things happening. It's very exciting. So with action movies, there's usually things like fighting or maybe cars going very fast or a lot of explosions like that. So let's just write here explosions or maybe even things like guns. So you can say, oh, I love action movies. You know, it's so exciting for me. I love movies like The Fast and the Furious. It's an amazing action movie for me. Now, these words are very useful to describe the feelings that people get from watching action movies. You can say, oh, it was a very fast moving or another word we can use is fast paced a fast paced action movie. That means that it moved very quickly. It didn't really go on for too long. It wasn't boring. You can say, oh, the Fast and the Furious is so fast paced. There's just action all of the time. Moving on, we have highly charged. Now charged means energy. Charged means energy. So you can say, it's a very highly charged action movie. There was a lot of excitement. My heart was pounding all of the time. It was very, very intense. We can also write over here the word intense. Keep me on the edge. So usually what that means is it's very suspenseful. I'll write that over here. I'll just write suspenseful. And what that means is you get very nervous because the action is so crazy. You don't know if the hero is going to die or live. You are, oh my God, what is happening? 
It keeps you on the edge. So you can say, I love action movies. I watched one action movie and it kept me on the edge of my seat. I was so nervous, I didn't know what was going to happen. On the edge of my seat. Riveting, riveting also means exciting. You can say, oh, the action scenes were riveting. It was so exciting and wonderful. It made me feel alive. And stunt scenes, the stunt is when they do something very dangerous or crazy. Like if you see the car flying in the sky or the motorcycle going through a building, you can say the stunt scenes were crazy and riveting. It kept me on the edge of my seat. So, these are good words to describe action movies. Moving up, we can go to drama movies. Let me just erase suspenseful over here. Drama movies generally do not have a lot of action. Generally, drama movies are much more realistic, which means it is more like real life stories. So drama movies usually have a lot of talking and a lot of emotions. We want to see people crying. We want to see people feeling things. So we've got some words that can describe drama movies. We have the word plot, plot lines, and screenplay. So these things usually mean the same thing. The plot and the screenplay basically means the story or the writing of any movie. But when we talk about dramas, we will reference the plot and the screenplay because we care more about what people say. We care more about the acting and we care more about the emotions. So, when you say, oh, I love watching drama movies, you can use these words, for example, oh, I watched such an amazing drama movie last night. The screenplay was wonderfully written. The characters had such great plot lines. The lines are the words that they say. It had such great plot lines and the plot was so riveting. I didn't know what was going to happen and there was a surprise in the end which was really beautiful and really emotional for me. Now, the next genre of movies we can talk about are rom-coms, chick flicks, and bromance. Now, all three of these movies are usually about romance. And romance, of course, we all know, means love. So these are love movies, love stories. But these are the three different kinds that you can find. The first word we have is rom-com, which are two words put together. The one word is romance, and the other word is comedy. And comedy usually means funny movie. So comedy means funny or humorous. So a rom-com is usually a funny movie but it is also about romance. So it is people falling in love and then funny things happen. Another one is a chick flick. Now, a chick is a slang word. So let's just write here slang. It is a slang word for girl. And flick is a slang word for a movie. So what a chick flick means, it is a girl movie. It is a movie that girls will like. So usually in a chick flick, a girl will be the main character and it will be something that she is important for her. Like she wants to get married or she's got something to do with her family. So a chick flick usually also has romance involved. 
And then on the opposite of that, we have a bromance. Bro is also a slang word and it means brother. And the word manse comes from romance. So it means brother romance. So it is not about two men falling in love with each other, but usually about friends, about two men who are very good friends and they do something together that makes them feel love for each other, but not romantic love, more like a brotherly love. For example, they have to travel together and face a lot of difficult things together and at the end they tell each other, hey man, I really love you, you are my brother. All right, so these are the love movies we can say. And here are some vocabulary words that we can use to describe how we feel about these movies. A feel-good movie and also heartwarming. Heartwarming means, of course, your heart feels warm, it feels good, maybe you cry, or maybe at the end you feel very happy about seeing people falling in love. So, when you answer a question pertaining to rom-coms, you can say, oh, I love romantic comedies, or I love rom-coms. It makes me feel good. It's a feel-good movie. We can say it's a feel-good movie. And the ending of it was so heartwarming when they got together. Or you can also say, if you're a man, oh, I love bromance movies or I love bromance comedies. You know, it's very cool for me. It's great to see the emotion. It has a very good plot. It had a very good storyline. And the ending was really heartwarming. So I left the movie feeling very good. Now, here are some more genres that you can talk about. First, we have future tech and sci-fi movies. Now, Usually people will use the word sci-fi in describing these movies, not so much future tech, but it is a technical term for it. Sci-fi movies are short for science fiction. So the word fiction we know means not real and science means that the fiction is based on science. So usually science fiction movies are in the future or we will have aliens. So movies like Star Wars is science fiction or even Blade Runner where you have things like robots. And words we can use for that are words like cinematography. Now, cinematography we can use in any movie. The cinematography usually means the visuals or usually the camera shots. So let me write here the camera shots. So we can say for any movie, especially for sci-fi movies, I loved the cinematography. They had beautiful shots of space and beautiful shots of the water. Another one is animation movies. Now animation movies means it is animated. And animated means it is drawn. So drawn. So you can draw it with hand like the old Disney movies. Or nowadays, people will use computers to make CGI. Now, CGI is a word you can also use. It means computer, computer generated. Generated means it is made, made by the computer. And I is images. So that just means that the pictures the images are made by computer. And we also have the word special effects. Special effects means like lasers, like spaceships, like explosions, even makeup. So the special effects is to make things that are not real or 
fictional look real. So special effects is things like CGI or lasers or make up. So you can say, I love sci-fi movies and I love animation movies. The special effects that they used to make it look real was amazing and it had wonderful cinematography. Now, moving on, we can go to horror movies. Horror movies usually involve things like monsters or ghosts or even zombies. And usually with a horror movie, there is a lot of blood and a better word we can use for blood when we talk about movies is violence. Violence is the noun and the adjective is violent. Violent is the adjective. So you can say, I love horror movies like zombie movies and ghost movies, but I cannot watch them if they are too violent. Mm -hmm. Another one is a suspense movie. Now, sometimes people think that a horror movie and a suspense movie is the same thing, but they are not. A suspense movie usually means it is very thrilling or exciting. It's thrilling or exciting. And it is not with monsters or ghosts. Sometimes it's like, a person is chasing someone and the people are hiding in a movie and you feel very nervous because you feel like the actor is going to get caught and is going to die. So just suspense means your heart is pounding, boom, 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 and you're very nervous. Some words we can use to describe the feeling of a horror or a suspense movie is make one's blood run cold. Now what that means is when you watch it, you feel a very cold feeling. You're feeling nervous. You're feeling worried. So that means you are feeling nervous or worried. And that is the same as suspenseful. When you are watching a horror movie, you can say, Oh, I love that ghost movie, but it was so suspenseful. When I saw the ghost catching the girl, my blood ran cold. I was so frightened and so nervous. Moving on, we can take a look at these genres. Comedy movies. Now, comedy movies are funny movies. They are very funny or they are very humorous. They are usually not serious and sometimes you can even say they are very silly. And some words that we can use to describe them are hilarious. I'll say it one more time. Hilarious, which means very, very funny, very funny. And laugh riot means so funny that you were laughing all of the time. So laughing all of the time. So you can say, oh, I love watching comedy movies. I saw a comedy movie yesterday and it was so hilarious. It was a laugh riot. I couldn't even breathe. I was laughing so much all of the time. Right. Moving on, we have documentaries, documentaries. Now documentaries, remember, as I said, with science fiction, fiction means not real. It is a story that is made up. But with a documentary, it is non-fiction, which means that it is true life stories. It is true or real life events or stories. And some vocabulary that we can use to describe our feeling of a documentary is thought 
provoking. The word provoke means it pushes you, it makes you work harder. So when we say thought, which is our thinking, thought provoking means it made us think in new ways that we did not expect. So I will just write here, think in new or even challenging ways. It can challenge your ideas about what you thought was right or something that you thought was true now gets exposed to not be true and it challenges your thinking. Another one is give me food for thought, which means that it gave you the food is not really food. It is more like ideas or examples. So I'll just write here ideas or examples. And what that means, give me food for thought, means it gave me new examples that really made me think about life and about myself. So you can say, I love watching documentaries on Netflix. It always gives me food for thought. And I watched one documentary about uh, a certain country and it was very thought provoking because I didn't know that these things were real and it challenged my thinking about the subject. Now, we'll be moving on to words and phrases to describe your TV watching habits. Now, your examiner might ask you, do you like watching TV shows or how often do you like watching TV shows? And you can use these phrases to fully describe your feeling about the subject. The first one is a very popular phrase that is being used by many people all over the world nowadays. And that is binge watch or binge watching. Binge means you do a lot in a little time. So let me just write here a lot in a little time. And you can use this not only for watching, but you can say binge eating or binge drinking as well. But it just means a lot in a little time. For example, you can say, oh, I love watching series. Series, of course, means one show that has a lot of seasons. A lot of seasons means a lot of episodes. So you can say, oh, the new series or the new season of this show came out and this weekend I was binge watching everything. I watched 10 episodes in one weekend. Very crazy. Moving on, we have go through phases. Now, what is a phase? A phase is a period of time. So a phase usually means a time, but in this context, it means a phase means a time of just doing one thing or liking one thing. So the phase here refers to a genre. So a time of liking one genre or one TV show. So let me give you an example of how to use it. Do you like watching a lot of different TV shows? Well, I go through phases. Last year, I went through a horror phase where I watched a lot of horror TV shows. But this year, I'm in a new phase. I'm in a different phase. This year, I'm watching a lot of sci-fi TV shows. All right. Moving on. Put some TV show in the background. Now, what that means is when you watch the TV show, you are not focused. So background means not focused or not your full attention. 
Sometimes when people watch TV shows like documentaries or like animation shows, they don't want to sit down and fully focus. They like to have friends over and just have the TV show on in the background so there's something to look at. So you can say, I don't watch TV shows that often. I prefer having my friends over and will put on some TV show in the background just so that there's something going on, but I don't focus so heavily on it. Moving on be really into some TV show. Now this word into, what that means is you're very interested in it. Very interested, very interested, or it's really captivating you. Let's use this word captivate. Captivate means it has captured you. You are very involved in it. So you can say, Oh, I am now really into Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, of course, is a very, very popular series. So you can say, I go through phases with TV shows. I was really into Game of Thrones, but now I'm not so into it anymore. Now I am into documentaries. Now, moving on, we will look at describe or words to describe a TV show you like and don't like. So, sometimes you can be asked, what do you like about a TV show or what things don't you like? And here are some useful phrases that you can use to describe your feelings. First, we have every episode finished with a cliffhanger. Now, a cliffhanger just think about the imagery of the words. A cliff means that you can fall down. Hanger means you are hanging on the cliff like this. So that will mean it is very suspenseful. Remember the word? Suspenseful means you are very nervous or you want to know oh, what is going to happen next? What's going to happen? He's in trouble. Whoop! The show stops and now you feel very anxious. You feel very anxious about what will happen next. For example, the show Breaking Bad, every episode would end with a cliffhanger. So you can say, I love watching Breaking Bad. Every episode has a cliffhanger that leaves me so anxious that I cannot wait to watch the next episode. And then, of course, a lot of people will binge watch the episodes. Moving on, they had a lot of plot threads to resolve. Now remember, the word plot means the story. And threads are like on clothes. You have a lot of threads that come together. So what that means is, in the story, if you have a lot of different characters with a lot of different stories, he's got a story here, she's got a story here, that means that all of the stories have to come together in the end. So the threads are the separate stories. I'll write here separate, the separate stories. So they had a lot of plot threads to resolve. Resolve means bring or tie together, which just means, let me think of a sentence. I love Game of Thrones, but there were so many different plot threads, I didn't know how they were going to resolve it. But in the end, they did, and it was really amazing. The plot and the storyline was so good. We'll move on. There were no spoilers. Now, this word is very popular nowadays with a lot of people. Spoiler means that you spoil the ending or you spoil the story of a show. So for example, if you haven't watched the show and I tell you, oh, in the end this happens, then you will go, oh no, you spoiled the ending for me. So 
we can say there were no spoilers. That means there was nothing that would tell me what was going to happen. So for example, if you're watching sports, you can say, please, I've been trying to avoid the spoilers all day long. I hate seeing spoilers. Next, we have good pace from scene to scene. The word pace means the speed. Most of the time, people like to have a good pace or a good movement when they're watching a TV show. If the pace is very slow, it can sometimes feel very boring. So you can say, I love watching shows that have a good pace from scene to scene. I am never bored watching it and there is never a wasted moment. Moving on, reruns. Re, of course, means again. So a rerun means that a show that has already been on TV and went off is being shown again. For example, Netflix has a lot of reruns and you can say, you know, I don't like watching new TV shows. I prefer watching reruns of my favorite shows on Netflix. Moving on, on the air is the opposite of a rerun. On the air means that it is a show that is now showing on TV. So on the air means now on, t now on TV. And usually when you have news or sports, you can say we are on the air, which means now the camera is showing you what is happening in real time. Yes. So for example, if you're watching a news show, you can say we are on the air now. Moving on. There was a lot of padding. Now what the word padding means is it is a storyline that is not important to the main storyline. It is like filler. Let's use the word filler. Filler material, which means it is not important, but it is just something to show so that the TV show can make the time a full 30 minutes. So it's just things we put in there to make the time complete. So you can say, I don't like a lot of shows that have too much padding. For example, some Japanese anime. Japanese anime sometimes have a lot of padding when they are not finished making the full story. Going on, plotting plot. Plotting means to move very slowly. So plotting means that the pace is not good. It's a slow pace. It's very boring. It's hard to watch. So you can say, I used to like that series. It had a very good pace, but later in the series, it started to be very, it started to have a plotting plot. The plot wasn't really moving that well. The pace was bad and I stopped watching it. Moving on, we have mindless reality TV show. So mindless means you don't have to think and that the people making the TV show don't want you to think. They just want to give you easy content. Reality TV shows also means that it is real life people. They are not professional actors. Let's just write here, not actors. So a mindless reality TV show is, for example, they are showing people getting married or they're showing a competition where someone has to pick who is going to be their boyfriend. It's not going to make you think. You're not going to talk about it afterwards. But if you just want to watch something after a long day of work, let's use that in a sentence. We can say 
you know what, I work very hard and at the end of the day I don't like watching things that make me think too much or make me use my brain too much. Sometimes I just want to watch a mindless reality TV show, eat my dinner and relax. So just one more time if someone asks you to describe a TV show or things that you like about it or don't like about it you can say well I like TV shows with good cliffhangers, I like TV shows that have a good pace, I don't like to see spoilers because I want to be surprised, I don't like TV shows that have plodding plots, I don't like a lot of padding that's going to waste my time and sometimes I just want to watch mindless reality TV shows so I don't have to think. And that is our lesson for today. So if you are going to have an IELTS speaking exam and you want to have more useful phrases about TV shows and movies then please review, watch it over and probably it will help you. I'm teacher Neil, thank you and see you next time.